Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Jamaica News in Review Residents happy for a new system to ease water crisis. Water woes that have plagued Watermount and Pedro communities in western central St. Catherine for years are expected to be resolved soon, with phase one of the project to pump water into the area on schedule to be completed by March, said Omar Francis, Councillor Caretaker for the Watermount Division. Meanwhile, phase two, which will take water to the communities of Buck Pasture, Kuja Hill, Burke Hill, and other works, is slated to begin shortly after with the overall completion of the project expected by June. The initiative was undertaken by Member of Parliament Dr. Christopher Tufton in collaboration with the Rural Water Supply Limited, RWSL, which committed $150 million to the initiative. However, RWSL's Managing Director, Ardley Thompson, reported on Monday that the work is projected to go over budget because of the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on resources availability and material prices. In 2020, work begun on implementing an effective water system which was lacking in some areas. A pumping system to gather water from the Williams Gully Dam has also been installed near Watermount Square. The commodity, which has the potential to impact over 7,000 households, will be pumped into two 20,000 gallon concrete tanks hosted by project workers. One is located in the Old Works area and the other in Pedro, where the water will be gravity fed into the Water Mountain neighborhood. A 30,000 gallon concrete tank with a 10,000 gallon reserve was also installed in the community to help residents overcome water shortages during drought periods. The previous system only served a limited portion of the era, said Thompson. Francis explained that this was a necessary step to take as when you have the water coming straight to the system and goes straight to the homes, it doesn't help at all because it means, therefore, that once water goes down, it goes down all the time. Despite the fact that the water system has not yet been fully constructed to flow into the residence pipes, Hyacinth Campbell, a member of the community for over 15 years, is pleased to see these much-needed improvements being made. She informed reporters that she has been living in the community for many years with low water pressures, having to go days without the commodity during lock-off. But now there is a change. We are happy for it, she said. Watermont Primary School Principal Carlin Thompson-Ling lamented that in the past, the water issue had a significant impact on the school. Some days, the institution had to close for half a day as there was no water. She added that on other days, she would have to ask some of the boys in the neighborhood to transport water from other locations onto the compound. To address the irregular water supply, the school had had to bear the cost of purchasing nine water tanks that have evaluated the issue to some degree. There were days when parents would call and say, Miss, I can't send the child to school because the uniform is not clean, I don't have any water, or the child might be missing out on lessons because, Miss, I had to go to the river this morning to get water, said Tom Seleng. Although the water may not be one of the first beneficiaries of the water improvement project, said Tom Seleng, she is confident that it will help parents to send the children to school. If we can reach them, we can teach them. If they are here, we can teach them. But when they are at home and they don't have water, or the parent can't pick up the chicken to sell, all the issues become connected, she said, as the lack of water affects the farming community's livelihood. But I see where the water project is going to improve the lives of the community members, she added. Total foolishness. St. Thomas residents fed up with the way road work being executed. Stakeholders in St. Thomas are at their wit's end with what they describe as the inefficient way in which the works on the Southern Coastal Highway Improvement Project, SCHIP, is being executed. Among those who have raised concerns are tax operators, business owners, and persons of the Parish Municipal Corporation, who said they have been grappling with extensive delays due to unusual traffic build up in the parish and the lack of regard being shown by the construction workers. I did level two construction at heart, and after you work, you're supposed to do housekeeping, clean up. If they had proper supervision, they wouldn't be doing the foolishness that they are doing on the road, Louis Millwood, president of the St. Thomas Tax Association, said, as he bemoaned the reason behind much of the delays. Millwood argued 
that taxi operators have been incurring significant expenses since the start of the project some two years ago, with the frequent need to repair car parts damaged by the worsening roadway. It's unfair who is going to compensate them for all of these mishaps. It is very hard for them right now because every week, gas price raise and this road infrastructure that they are driving on right now is ridiculous. We are happy for the road improvement in the parish, but not in the manner in which it is being done. It's total foolishness, he reported. Equally annoyed is Morant Bay Councillor Ron Bryan, who, while expressing gratitude for the improvement of St. Thomas' major thoroughfare, pointed to the need for more safety signs as the construction continues. According to him, there is no proper signage to guide motorists, so them work crew dig a hole, same way them just bank it on the road, accidents waiting to happen. They don't care or respect the people of St. Thomas. I'm starting to wonder if the contractors know anything about road work because what we're getting is garbage. Brian also complained that the flagmen and tractor operators were not coordinating well enough to ease the flow of traffic. The two of them telling you to go at the same time and then that caused more traffic jam. The people with the equipment just cross the road with the machine at any time and you have to just wait on them because the traffic flows again. It bothers me a lot, he said. According to the concerns raised by the stakeholders, National Works Agency CEO E.G. Hunter pleaded for patients doing major projects such as SCHIP, sections of which are slated for completion later this year. We have the duty to ensure that the project is implemented in the most efficient way and at least discomfort to the public. However, coexistence is something that is important. The project has to be done and people want to go about their business so there has to be give and take on both sides, he said. Sharing that the agency is doing all it can to improve the experience, Hunter noted that there is also to be expected a reasonable level of discomfort associated with the implementation of such projects. He reported that the necessary signs would be installed in short order. Mobe residents reject Nepal's assurances about crocodile. Residents and a worker in Montego Bay Freeport and Bo communities are strongly disputing the National Environment and Planning Agency's NEPA assurances that there is no need to fear a crocodile, which was recently spotted near Bogue's Wedge Pond, as they dread potential up-close encounters with the reptile. According to an anonymous source, persons who are employed there run the risk of an unpleasant meeting with a crocodile if they happen to come across it in the tall grass surrounding the ponds. We no feel comfortable, so we work in our era while animal is there. We no know what might happen if him attack we, the source reported. One of the times, me see him over by a tree, where the fence is. Him lie down, and me no know if him belly full, or him did asleep, so me I wonder if him dead, or him alive. But when me look, me see him start moving foot. The next day, him the crocodile move come into one of the pan, and he move from that pan to the next pan. I don't see him from Friday, January 21, but him still the boat, the source added. It's dangerous for the men who are on the ground. You don't know if he's in the grass, and that might go towards him. Two weeks ago, a video emerged on social media which showed the huge crocodile slipping into one of the sewage ponds near the National Water Commission's NWC offices in Bogue. Another source with intimate knowledge of the era reported seeing the crocodile hunting for fish in the pond, although such activity would be environmentally detrimental. It looked like him a search for fish and eat them out. The fish in the pond is to eat the bacteria and clean the pond, so those fish are not to be eaten, the second source noted. Despite those concerns, however, NWC Public Relations Officer Andrew Cannon insisted when contacted by reporters that residents and persons who work near the sewage ponds have no need to be worried. He noted that Nepal would have done sensitization training for dealing with the crocodile following this month's recent sighting. They, the workers, would know, based on their training, to take the precautionary measures, and it is something that they would be aware of, said Canon. My understanding is that based on the link and correspondence with Nepal, a lot of public education would have taken place to sensitize not only the workers but the community as to how to deal with these things. It is not strange, based on what I'm picking up, to have crocodiles in that particular era and other eras, added Canon. 
those who are in the vicinity of the ponds are not the only ones who are concerned about the presence of reptile. As a Fairview resident, Faye Thompson recalled previous sites in her community, including one that was reported last year. Any human being with sense should be concerned because I have heard of instances where taxi men have been driving on the road and have seen crocodiles trying to cross from one side of the road to the other. The report about the one that was circulating last year that crocodile was sighted in the lagoon area near Fairview, Thomas explained. If the relevant authorities are aware that this dropping up last year, they should not put it under the bed. They should have it on the front page and ensure they are on top of things, and it should not be ignored. I would hate to know that somebody is swimming in the area, especially in the lagoon or fishery sanitary, or even if somebody is in a boat coming along and when you look you see a crocodile, Thomas added. Crocodiles are a protected species under Jamaica's Wildlife Protection Act. Under Section 6 of the Act, it is forbidden to hunt reptiles. Section 20 says that as a person found guilty of any offense covered under the Act, including the hunting of protected species, may be fined up to $100,000 or spend 12 months in prison. Nepal has been conducting a population survey of crocodiles in their natural habitat, which also includes Salt March in Trelawney and most sections of Jamaica's South Coast. According to the organization, one recurring problem it has to wrestle with its practice of hunting crocodiles for their meat when it turns threatening the safety of the crocodile population. It should be noted that while crocodiles are often stigmatized as aggressive, they have only been four recorded fatal attacks by crocodiles in Jamaica since 1847. Regarding the most recent crocodile sighting, while advising caution if the reptile is spotted again, Nepa indicated that the risk of encountering the animal should be low. UWI's Chancellor is not under investigation, says Campus Registrar. Registrar of the University of the West Indies, Dr. Murray Simit, is denying media reports that Vice Chancellor Hilary Beckles is investigating the ceremonial head of the regional institution, Chancellor Robert Bermudez. Dr. Simit was questioned yesterday afternoon by members of Parliament's Human Resources and Social Development Committee amid concern over reports of a rift between the Vice-Chancellor and Chancellor. Dr. Smith admitted that there was a divergence of opinions regarding a damning 2020 government report into the UWI. Opposition MP Dr. Maurice Guy questioned Dr. Smith as to whether there was a conflict between Beckles and Bermudez regarding the findings of the 2020 report. He specifically noted that aspects of the report commissioned by Chancellor Bermudez seem to have recommended limiting the powers of the vice chancellor it came home or came out as seemingly registrar that there is a loggerhead between the chancellor and the vice chancellor and that there was almost like a, a um, two different camps um, seemingly at odds with each other where the university is concerned however the uwi registrar said he could not say whether there's a rift between the two. He admitted that there were differing opinions over the findings of the report. I am not able to confirm, indicate, deny whether or not there is dissonance between the two leaders of the university. What I will say, Chair uh, Members, is that this is a complex organization. It has been around for seven decades, and like the constitution of any country, we review our constitutional framework to ensure that the institution is agile and that is efficient. There are diverse, divergent, as, di as well as there are diverse views with, it, with respect to the fact findings, the methodology. Council is still deliberating and in fact a decision will be, will be made in the next couple of weeks when council meets as it concerns the recommendations that are before us. At an annual meeting on April 30 last year, the university's council approved the renewal of Beckel's contract despite objections from Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago. A recent media report also suggested an investigation was launched into Chancellor Bermudez by Vice Chancellor Beckles through a committee that reports to his office. Dr. Smith says while he would not impute the motive of journalists who put out their version of events, he specifically denied allegations that the Chancellor was under investigation. However, he admitted that a commission was set up by Vice Chancellor Beckles to probe the processes of his appointment.
The Vice Chancellor did in fact establish a committee to look at the processes that were um, up enacted as it concerns his appointment. He, he had in fact shared that information with the council when it met in July 2021 and it is my expectation that the council will look at that. It is not correct, it's, so it's not the outcome that is before, that was before the committee uh, chancellor, it's whether or not the processes, the established processes were, were, were observed. UWI council is in the process of reviewing the over 90 recommendations put forward in the report commissioned by the Chancellor. Jamaica Constabulary Force lists more than 200 wanted men. Deputy Commissioner of Police Fitzbailey says there are more than 200 wanted men in Jamaica. DCP Bailey says removing these men from the streets will help to significantly reduce crime. DCP Bailey is urging the men to turn themselves in. He is also calling on the members of the public to assist in getting the men into custody. It is an accepted fact that the level of crime in Jamaica is intolerable and abnormal. We continue to see some vicious, gruesome and brutal acts of violence being perpetrated by criminal elements. What we are seeing in Jamaica is the use of threat or violence to create fear and intimidation, not just with the direct victim, but among the wider society. The underlying objective, in my view, is for economic benefits, turf control, and status. I believe that this is not normal, and the Commission of Police have been consistent in trying to bring across the message that what we are seeing in Jamaica is not a normal situation. The United Nations defines what a normal society ought to be. And if we have a murder rate that exceeds 30 per 100,000, we are in abnormal situation. And so when there is an abnormal situation, there is a required for a similar response. Therefore, the question, and I still will ask a question, it remains, are some of these activity in support of an ideology? We talk about political and religious ideology, but is there any room for us to focus on economic ideology? When a person uses force to intimidate businesses to conform to their request for economic benefit. What do we characterize that as? And a failure to comply with the edicts of these criminals can result to serious consequences, including the burning down of businesses, violent attacks against workers and family members of these businesses. What do we classify this as? I will not seek to put a classification on it, but I wish that all well-thinking Jamaica will do a reflection and ask ourselves, what are we faced with and how are we going to deal with the reality? While the police, and we are not backing down from our responsibility, we have a responsibility to ensure that this nation is secure. We have a responsibility to ensure that the citizen enjoy an environment that is free from crime and the fear of crime. But there are some, what I consider to be some institutional issues that must be dealt with. And these are outside of the scope of the police. And I believe that the joined up approach that we see is relevant. The criminal justice system we can't just look at the police in isolation. We have to look at the whole criminal justice system and the, the significant work that is being done, but it's a work in process, progress. There are a number of persons that have contributed significantly to crime in Jamaica, and currently there are over 200 wanted persons 
persons who are wanted for serious crimes. They have engaged in murder, extortion, rape, etc. Today, I want to appeal to these individuals who are wanted by the police to turn themselves in. I also want to appeal to their relatives to encourage them to surrender to the police. I also want to appeal to citizens within the various communities to encourage these individuals to report or hand themselves in to the police. Religious group, pastors, justice as a peace, and even attorney at law, I encourage you to encourage these individuals to surrender to the police. I must also remind the members of the public that harboring a fugitive is a crime. And we intend to ensure that the letter of the law is complied with. And so I want to highlight some of the wanted persons that we have and that we are hunting. We have made a lot of effort in trying to locate these individuals and we still have not been able to arrest them. I want to say that my calling you to today is to give these individuals the opportunity to surrender. These individuals are considered to be very dangerous. They, are, they carry arm and they will shoot and they will kill. Let me move to the persons that are wanted. There are 48 cases of murder, 31 cases of shooting and wounding, and there are 90 wanted persons. If these persons are identified, I am inviting the citizen to call Crime Stop at 311 Operation Kingfish at 811 Police Emergency at 119 I think I'm going I need to get back to the other slide just CIB headquarters at 929 9256 or the local police. In era one, we have Ricardo Palmer O.C. Ritchie. He is black in complexion, about five, four feet five inches tall. Uh, he frequents Norwood in St. James. He is wanted for murder committed in Opewell, Sandy Bay, and over. We have Eric Clark, O.C. Legacy. He's wanted for murder, committed at Cash Hill River, or Cash Hill, Anover. We have Vernon Shearer, O.C. Van Damme. He's wanted for illegal possession of firearm, rape, abduction, assault at common law. Kayon Casley, O.C. Casper. He's wanted for shooting with intent, illegal possession of firearm, and robbery ag aggravation. Ricardo Robinson, O.C. Travis, O.C. Charmer, is wanted for shooting with intent, illegal possession of firearm, and robbery with aggravation. Nicholas Stevens is wanted for rape in Hanover. Marvin Strawn, O.C. Jazza, is wanted for rape, again committed in Hanover. Sheldon Brown, O.C. Gambler, he is wanted for wounded with intent and robbery with aggravation. Gabar Griffiths, O.C. Weedy, is wanted for shooting with intent, and this was committed in Opel and Over. Omar James is wanted for rape. Again, this was committed in Anover. Leon Lloyd Record, O.C. Brown Dog, is wanted for rape. O'Brien Thomas. Again, he's from Anover. We don't have an image of him, but he's wanted for rape, and this was committed in 2012. 
Roy Mitchell O.C. Lady, Laddie, or Randy. Again, he's wanted for rape in Hanover. Kenroy Roach, O.C. Ticker. He's wanted for murder of German drone committed on the 6th of March 2020 at Opel District in St. James. Shaquille Nath Nathaniel Brown is wanted for murder, and this was committed in Montego Bay. Nikilo Lewis O.C. Kino, O.C.J., O.C. Rich Kid, is wanted for two counts of murders and three counts of wounding with intent committed in Lilliput, St. James. Kevin White, O.C. Chucky Dunn, is wanted for shooting with intent of Paul Campbell. This was again committed in Mount Carey, St. James. Gerald McNaughton, O.C. Ice, is wanted for murder of Delroy Fisher and wounded with intent of Alwyn Burchell. This was committed again, again in St. James, that is Providence, flankers in St. James. We have Andre Hines, O.C. Bunny. He's wanted for double murder of Roger Jordan Reed and Antica Weatherburn and wounded with intent of Madeline Jackson committed on the 30th of November, 2020. We have Moses Ramsey. He's wanted for two counts of shooting committed in Westmoreland. Devani Bennett, O.C. Santa. He's wanted for murder committed in Westmoreland. Kevin Clark, O.C. Utch. He's wanted for double murder committed in Westmoreland. Barton Shearer, O.C. Bops. He's wanted for murder committed in Westmoreland. In era two, we have Elroy Griffiths. O.C. Greg, O.C. Siki, he's wanted for murder. Devon Brown, O.C. Blender from Portland, he's wanted for shooting with intent. Morris Clark, O.C. Beef, he's wanted for three counts of rape. And this was committed in Portland. Sadre Travis Burry, Burry Boy, he's wanted for murder, committed in St. Mary. Jerome Doney, O.C. Dada, is wanted for murder in St. Mary. Damian Itchman, O.C. Wingy, is wanted for murder, the murder of Jace McLean in Highgate, St. Mary. Jamel Antoine Oaks is wanted for murder, and that's in St. Mary again. Chinloy Spencer, O.C. To Do, is wanted for murder, committed in Arakabessa, St. Mary. Damian Christopher Boyd, is wanted for wounded with intent, committed in St. Mary, Islington, exact, to be exact. Alric Scott is wanted for rape, committed in St. Mary. Manton Brown O.C. Banton is wanted for two count of murder and wounded with intent. It's com it was committed in St. Catherine South. Brian Forbes O.C. QQ, wanted for double murder, in St. Mary. And I, in St. Anne, actually, and I want to say that this person has been very elusive. When I was here a commander, we put out a lot of effort to try and locate him, but he's still wanted, and we appeal to the public. Albert Dyer, O.C. Mojo, is wanted for murder in St. Anne. Nikoi Cunningham, O.C. Hype, is wanted for murder in St. Anne. Christopher Brown is wanted for shooting in Steertown, St. Anne. Dwayne Christie O.C. Kojak is wanted for murder committed in St. Anne. That's Cave Valley. In era three, we have Romaine Murray, O.C. John Town. He's wanted for shooting with intent and illegal possession of firearm. And I know he's a person of interest in many other incidents. Steve Leonard Francis is wanted for murder in Clarendon. Panif Broomfield, O.C. Chang, is wanted for shooting and robbery in Maypen, Clarendon. Colin Bailey, no relation, O.C. Alex, O.C. Foodie, is wanted for shooting with intent in Maypen, Clarendon. Othniel Andre Smith, is wanted for murder committed 
in Clarendon, Fort Park, Clarendon to be exact. Curtel Marvel Shand O.C. Dennis is wanted for murder committed in Milk River, Clarendon. Dwayne Butler O.C. Tez is wanted for murder committed at Hazard Drive in Clarendon. Alton Garden is wanted for murder and shooting with intent against the police. This happened is is free if frequent Frankfield Bunkers Hill in Clarendon. Sekoma Bennett OC Ginger OC Siki is wanted for murder, shooting with intent and illegal possession of firearm. Frequent Comfort District Manchester. Asa Gar Martin OC Asa is wanted for shooting with intent and illegal possession of firearm committed in Manchester. Romaine Reed is wanted for robbery ag aggravation and legal possession of firearm committed in Manchester. Shawane Shamar Rose OC Buki is wanted for murder, shooting and wounding with intent as well as illegal possession of firearm committed in Manchester. Krishna Barrett is wanted for murder committed in St. Elizabeth. Alex Anthony McDonald is wanted for murder committed in St. Elizabeth. Eric Campbell, O.C. Frost, is wanted for shooting with intent committed in St. Elizabeth. Dujan Wright, O.C. Buji or Soji, is wanted for shooting with intent committed in St. Elizabeth. And in the corporate era, we have Javon Ford, O.C. Jevy, is wanted for murder committed in St. Andrew, that's Ferry District, St. Andrew. O'Neill Cunningham, O.C. Biggs, is wanted for murder, committed in St. Andrew South. Shantone Cardis, O.C. Chassis, Taiwan, O.C. Taiwan, is wanted for shooting with intent, committed again in St. Andrew South. Albert Mitchell, O.C. Bali, is wanted for murder, Committed again in St. Andrews South. Raheem Brown, O.C. Berger, is wanted for murder. Committed again in St. Andrews South. Everton McDonald, O.C. Ever, is wanted for murder. Committed in Kingston Central. Shanil May, is wanted for shooting with intent against the police. And that happened in St. Andrews Central. David Fowler, O.C. Ocker Slime, O.C. Hothead, is wanted for murder committed in Kingston Central. Mervyn Henry, O.C. Biggie, is wanted for murder committed in St. Andrew Central. Shanrick Chavon Nugent, O.C. Dandan, is wanted for murder committed in St. Andrew Central and he's affiliated to the Fleet Street gang. Kevin Cole, O.C. Kev Mann, is wanted for murder committed in Kingston East. Jordan Henry, O.C. Jack, is wanted for shooting with intent committed in Kingston East. Andre Robinson, O.C. Kimi, Kemi, is wanted for wounded with intent committed in Kingston East. Paul Waite, O.C. Poppy, is wanted for murder and wounding with intent committed in Kingston East. Marlon Stevenson, O.C. Finger Blocks, is wanted for shooting with intent committed in Kingston East. Richard Higgins, O.C. Bob, is wanted for shooting with intent against the police and this happened in Kingston East. O'Shane Morris, O.C. Chucky, is wanted for murder. That's Kingston, St. Andrew Central. It happened at Swallowfield Road. Alexander Webb, O.C. Puppet, is wanted for shooting committed in St. Andrew Central. That's Nannyville Boulevard. Jordan Henry, is wanted for murder committed in 
King's in St. Andrew Central, that is on Lady Musgrave Road. Dante Sutherland, O.C. Ashboy, he's wanted for murder committed along Dallas Road, Kingston 6, St. Andrew, that's St. Andrew Central again. Jermaine Simit, O.C. Cartel, O.C. Gazaman, O.C. Worm, he's wanted for murder committed in St. Andrew North Division. That's Golden Spring Road. Kemar Graham. Or Kemar Graham. He's wanted for murder committed in St. Andrew North. That's in Boomall, St. Andrew. Kevin Fletcher, O.C. Tippy. He's wanted for shooting with intent. And that is in St. Catherine North. Committed along Barry Main Road, Bagwalk. Shamar O'Connor, O.C. Zoom. He's wanted for wounded with intent. Committed at Palm. That's Treadways, St. Catherine. Andy Parkinson. He's wanted for shooting with intent. That was committed in St. Catherine. That is Macook Spen, Spanish Town. Alvin Messam, O.C. Kevin. He's wanted for murder. Committed at Whitewater Boulevard, Spanish Town, St. Catherine. Juna Brown is wanted for murder. Committed at Springvale District, Bogwalk, St. Catherine. Monton Brown is wanted for murder. Committed along Borlias Boulevard, vicinity Gregory Park. And that's again in St. Catherine South. Marlon Bennett, O.C. Shortman. Oh, Barnett. Marlon Barnett, O.C. Shortman. O.C. Jamo. He's wanted for murder committed in St. Catherine. That's Gregory Park. Stokely Collins, O.C. Pepper. He's wanted for murder committed in Central Village. That's Zambia Saint, uh, Central Village, St. Catherine. Barrington Campbell, O.C. Cooley. O.C. Jason. He's wanted for shooting with intent committed along Central Road, Spalling Garden, Central Village. Sheldon Wright, O.C. Boy. He's wanted for murder committed in Nagahead, St. Catherine, and that's Portmore. Nestor Morris, O.C. Bigger. He's wanted for shooting with intent committed upon members of the JCF, and that happened in St. Thomas. Gawain Williams, O.C. Chris. O.C. Nano, he's wanted for murder and wounded, wounding committed in St. Thomas. If these persons are identified, I am inviting the citizen to call Crime Stop at 311, Operation Kingfish at 811, Police Emergency at 119. CIB headquarters at 929-9256 are the local police. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.